I've got one more for you, and then we'll take a break. <laughs> Guys? Okay, so one more, and then we'll take a break. <clears throat> what I want to show you is um, what happens if, basically, the, the value of u and, and v. Okay, so u and v are incredibly valuable because if I go into my top view, well, any view really, um, I'm just going to create a warped surface so that you can see and understand what it really is. So um, if I create a warped surface like this, right, so it's, it's not exactly a, well, I'll just loft it actually. It's not exactly a, a straight edge. Right, but right now it's still planar, and that's great. Um, I can basically set one surface and select that instead, and now my grid gets warped as a parametrical subdivision. So with sliders starting 0 to 20 ish, you guys don't have to do the sliders. I just want you to see that it's as easy as. Now I can break this thing down into, you know, larger subdivisions or smaller subdivisions, however I see fit um, for that particular form. Okay, so, and now even more particularly, um, what I can do, let me get rid of the surface. And I'm just going to um, quickly modify the curves and make them 3D. Okay, so now I've got these kind of crazy curves that are happening in space like this. I loft them together. And now I can map it onto that surface as well. Okay, so um, what I'm getting at with this is that a, a, a truly good working knowledge of, of um, subdivisions and the organizational structure of how panelization can work here uh, is going to truly benefit you uh, because a lot of what we're going to be doing with design is kind of assembly based. And so panelization comes into play quite a bit. Um, the, the next thing that I want to do before we uh, progress is I need to make sure that all of my geometry lives within my surface. And actually, I'm going to quickly transition back to my other surface, to be honest. So let me turn my main layer back on. And I'm going to reference that one instead. and then turn my main layer off. Okay. <clears throat> so the other thing I want to do is get you to understand what it's like to work in three dimensions. Okay, so now the next step for us is going to be mapping circles onto our surface and then subtracting those circles from the surface to create a perforation. So <clears throat> uh, to do that, what you would think is if you go up to, say, curve and primitive, and this one right here, just the basic circle family. The circle family, when you drop it in, curve prim, the circle family requires, obviously, the base plane, which is essentially the points that it's going to be located, and a radius. That's really simple. The default value is the origin and a radius of 1. But if my base plane is all of the points of my surface, it maps a circle to all the points, however, their 
situated in the x and y plane. So what I'm going to walk through with you in the next, um, in the next video is, uh, would be two things. Well, the next, sorry, I'll, the next video we're going to actually learn about turning them so that they map the surface. But first, no, I changed my mind. We'll just go into the next video. We'll turn them first, and then you'll see what else we have to do that I was going to introduce. Okay, questions about this so far? So not too much different right here. It's kind of just a couple of exercises um, that we played around with. All right, so let's take a 10-minute break, and then we'll come back and get going with some more.